What's going on smart people? Today I'm bringing you another article review and we're shaking things up a little bit in that I've actually already read this article because I was on the Google machine today and uh, I came across this article called Forget What You've Read, Scientists Can't Prove a Thing. And at first I was like, here we go, here's another one of those vaccines cause autism and global warming is a myth type of people who was just given permission to write an article and spread misinformation. But no, turns out this article is actually fantastic. It was written by Michael Bierkuk, sorry if I butchered your last name, but I think this is a, a physics professor. And the theme of this article is all about kind of putting the, the fire to the scientists in that we need to be better at communicating and defining the words that we're using. Okay, so in some of my videos, I might have talked about how I get annoyed when people misuse the words like theory or law. This is addressed in this article and a few other words that are commonly misused. So it starts off, it starts off sort of citing this other article that's linked right here. Uh, and it talks about how PhDs need to put more effort into communicating the science that we do in a way to where it reaches more than just the people within their field, but the general public. So building off of that, this isn't just limited to scientific jargon. It's mostly directed at words that also have meaning in everyday life. So they take the, they take the special example of climate change and they, they kick things off with theory, the word theory, which immediately caught my attention because I always hate when people misuse the word theory. Uh, the example, the first example says climate change is just a theory and then he kind of chimes in to say, well no, okay. Really, all ideas in science are theories, or hypotheses, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, theory is like a more supported and tested hypothesis, but you get the idea. People tend to have this misconception that theories and laws are almost like Pokemon, right? Like at some point a theory evolves into a law, or that there's like some committee that says this theory has enough evidence, therefore it is granted the rank of law. And it's, it's like that Star Wars scene where Anakin wasn't granted the rank of master, but uh, that, that's just so, that's so incorrect. At no point does a theory ever become a law. They're completely different entities, right? A theory is normally a mathematical description that describes some physical phenomena that's observed. That thing that observed is talked about as the law. That's the observation. And um, no matter if it's a theory or a law, there has to be a way to disprove it if enough evidence presents itself, right? That's just the idea of science being presented in a way that's falsifiable. So uh, I, I like this little, he says, if it cannot somehow be disproven by experiment, then it is not scientific. That's like exactly what Feynman said, where he said if you're a theorist, and it doesn't matter how smart you are or what your name is, if your theory doesn't agree with experiment, you're wrong. And then you move on. Uh, so he takes, for example, gravitation, you know, if apples fall from trees, if apples fall from trees repeatedly and we're predicting that, then it seems like we understand it enough to where we can teach it in classrooms. However, we're allowing for the chance that if an apple falls upward, then we have to go back to the drawing board. But just because that would prove it wrong doesn't necessarily mean that there should be an equal amount of time spent in the classroom talking about upwards falling apples. Okay. So then he goes on to talk about another word, which is proof. When people use the word proof in everyday talk, uh, they're using it synonymously with evidence. And a scientist could have a lot of evidence, but they would never say that they have proof because he says proof does not exist in science. And that's, that's true, right? Because if there was, then what you're talking about wouldn't be falsifiable because there is a huge difference between proof being evidence and proof as used in mathematics. A proof in mathematics is extremely rigorous. It follows from logic and nothing else. There's no interpretation. You don't even have to know if these things are tied to anything that's physical. And that makes it so much more, so much more sound, a proof in math. So if you're, if you're talking about a proof in math, there's, it's not evidence. It's not saying, show me some proof that 2n, if n is an integer, is always an even number because that would just be like proving a special case and that means nothing in math right two times three is even does that mean all integers multiplied by two are even no there's a rigorous way of proving it that cannot be argued against once it's proven or you can try to argue but there is no argument i should say that and that kind of thing doesn't doesn't exist within the realm of uh, see I'm, I'm talking with this with the approach of physics uh but i guess it extends to other branches of science as well but just because you can't prove something 
within the realm of science doesn't mean that we're just like running around going crazy like nothing can be proven ah. he says uh, uh, so long as the evidence is is consistent with the theory the theory can be validated right you can live your life as if the theory is true as if it has been proven because that's just being that's just progress that's just being pragmatic at some point you have to move to the next step right and then he moves on to the next word that's frequently misused or or has I guess a different translation which is uncertainty and this is just a natural extension from the whole proof thing if you cannot inherently prove anything in science that means you're allowing for the idea that something else can happen and uh, so I'm gonna just read this little paragraph that he has that I think is really well written he says a scientist cannot and will not say there is absolute certainty that you won't fly off into space due to a quirk in gravitational theory quantum mechanics or the like. He or she would simply say that an occurrence is extraordinarily unlikely, so unlikely that it wouldn't on average happen even once during the age of the known universe. Even though that's very unlikely, there remains uncertainty. So that pretty much sums it up. So in my opinion, this little section on uncertainty really shines a light on uh, sort of scientific illiteracy with the people that make the arguments that, well, you can't prove that blah, 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 blah. Have you ever noticed, though, that if you were to kind of flip that argument on its side, like say someone says, you can't prove that climate change is caused by humans, and I would say, well, I can't prove that there's an elephant on the other side of the moon. They get sort of offended, like, how are you saying those are the same thing? But really, it's the same argument, right? And that thing always, always upsets me, or it triggers me a little bit, trigger me timbers. Then goes on, this is where he holds the fire to the scientist, and says that at the end of the day, if we're the ones that are conducting the research and we're the ones publishing the papers, then it's on us to make sure that we're communicating it in such a way to where there's no ambiguity in, in, in just the terminology, not even just the, the jargon, like I'm not saying Laplacian or something like that. It's just, it's a word like proof. It's something that's used widely and defining our terms is something that's worth doing. And um, so at this point he says, uh, the burden for fixing this communication problem falls heavily on the scientist. We need to better educate the public about the meaning of our words and of the basic principles of science. We fail when we assume that everyone thinks or argues the way that we do. And I think that really sums it up. So I, I really wanted to just share this article. I thought it was really well written and I thought it hit on a bunch of different, uh, different examples of how something in science means a different thing uh, to the general public. So I hope a lot of people read this article. More specifically, I hope a lot of people outside of science read it and realize that sometimes it's, it's hard to, to translate. Um, but that doesn't mean it's not worth doing. But anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments section if you did, and I'll see you guys there.